chicken soup. Soup's back. Remembered it this time. Um, chicken is sort of god tier soup, isn't it? It's up there with tomato and oxtail. I want to talk about simulators, but I'm going to go there via criticism because people, whenever someone writes anything vaguely critical about me on the subreddit, I get a million tweets from people going, look at this thing. And most criticism is just, don't do this thing because I don't like it. But sometimes people genuinely have constructive criticism and it's great. And I'm going to go to one of these pieces of constructive criticism and talk about it. And then I'll end up talking about simulators. You have been warned. So I'm now going to read because it's over there. I watched yesterday's video, the Nerdcube's Hell video on Snowcat Simulator. As I've seen with other Hell videos, there's a problem I have with them. There isn't always a problem with the game, but Dan tries to find the problems and complains when the game isn't fun to him. Or when he tries and break it and it works. Okay, so that's not the part of the criticism I want to talk about, but I do really want to mention the bit where it says, uh, it complains that the game isn't fun to him, and him is in italics. Like I'm not being that omniscient fucking critical god who floats above all creation going, that is, uh, uh, I can't, you can't do unbiased opinions. A, a, an opinion is something filtered through your biases. That's how it works. There's a thing, biases, out pops an opinion. That's why people like different things, because they come from different places. That's why you should have multiple people you listen to and not just one person you listen to. It, you, it's not fun to me. I'm not supposed to go, oh, this isn't fun to me, but I can't criticize it because someone might like it. People get excited about the most boring thing. People collect bus timetables. Okay, I'm not going to go, oh, the bus is late and I'm just hellishly angry about this. But I get to look at a timetable and some people actually like looking at bus timetables, so I'll wait. But in case in point, I got really excited the other day because I bought a motor for Lego. Three people fell asleep when I showed that off. People have different things of what makes them happy or not, and I can't sit there and go, in my opinion, and then say a thing, or finish every critical point I say with, but other people might like it, because that would triple the video's length and make them all incredibly boring. Just, just learn what a bias is. Every fucker's biased. It's important. With the Snowcat Simulator video, the game seemed like it was in pretty good shape. Okay, well, great. Thanks for just having an invisible mountain that I'm completely stuck on now. The cars had a reasonable sound. Why is it completely <laughs> silent? There wasn't any problems with the physics or the graphics. I can't go any faster than 31 kilometers an hour. I, like, the speed of the mountain surely would... Like, this slope would... And the game seemed like it was pretty self-forward and wasn't confusing. Snowblower. That was a snowblower? They have no names, they're just vehicles. But Dan wanted to find a problem. So he tried running someone over. The person goes over the snowcat. What was he expecting? The game isn't run over people in a utility truck. It's meant to be a snowcat simulator. I finished my soup. Yes. It is supposed to be a snowcat simulator. It is supposed to simulate the experience of being in a snowcat. Simulators are supposed to be as close to the thing as possible and this ga these games aren't. They're not even close. They're not even slightly close. Good simulators like Euro Truck Simulator, OMSI, Train Simulator, they do something that makes me feel like I'm actually doing the thing. And they all do different things. So OMSI is all about the atmosphere. OMSI is entirely about the atmosphere. When you're sitting, because it's not the best game, uh, best looking game graphically, but when you're sitting in the cockpit and you've got the little squeaky window, which is one of my favorite things in gaming ever, and you've got the people coming in, you've got the rattles, the soundscape in OMSI sells it to me. I am sitting in a bus when I'm playing OMSI. The rattling, the driving around, the, the, the especially at nighttime, driving at nighttime with just the lights just picking up little things and not many people around, it's just reminds me of getting the bus home when I was a teenager coming back from girlfriend's place and it was a long ass bus and I used to fall asleep during it and that all comes back to me that comes back to me because they actually went the people who made that game love buses they love buses they absolutely adore buses and that comes across the uh, train simulator train simulator works because when I'm done playing train simulator I kind of know how to drive a train. I know what all the levers do. If you put me in a train, I'd kind of nail it, pretty much. It's it's not like, because the, the things that you have there and the way you pull them all down and stuff, most of that I know. I know the basics, there's probably advanced stuff that I don't know, but the basics of the levers, I kind of get now. I know how a train works. So that's what that one brings to table. Euro Truck Simulator is just massive and expansive and feels like going on a big trip. It feels like driving across a big trip. The interior view in Euro Truck Simulator is one of the best ever and that is going to be the thing that I just fall in love with with VR 
as soon as we get a decent enough VR headset that you can't see the pixels, I'm going to just play that game all the time because that is where I want to lose myself. Because it's just a big ass road trip. The scenery constantly changes. The roads are nice. They're, they're, you can't just constantly relax on a road. They're never just perfectly straight. You're always a little bit of a twist, always a little bit of something. It feels great to drive. All of the vehicles in these three games feel like driving the actual vehicle. I've never driven the actual vehicle, but it's how I feel. Like they, They're heavier and they're weightier. And every single game that I've played in the Hell Series that's a simulator, they all just feel the same. They've all got this default physics engine that's not been touched. Every car just feels like this bizarrely strange slidey thing. And there's no immersion. There's no nothing. I mean... It, those games basically play out like someone reading a list from Wikipedia of tasks snowcats do. Number one, drive stuff here, drive stuff there. There's no, there's no joy to it. Nobody making those games loves the vehicles they're making, and it shows. And they're not good simulator. You can't play a snowcat simulator and then come across going, oh, I know what a snowcat does now. And as for running people over, that's vital. That's absolutely vital to have because I believe that if you're driving a snowcat up a mountain the, where loads of people are coming down, you're going to have to pay attention. I, a big part of that game would be making sure no skiers, because skiers go fucking everywhere. That's what skiers do. And having to not run skiers over is an important part of a snowcat driver's job. In OMSI, you get punished for hitting people. I think the same in Eurotrack Simulator as well. You plow into someone in OMSI, you definitely get fined for it. They're a danger, and you should get punished because that's not simulating it. They can still go over or go through. I don't really mind what they do, but you don't get punished for it. In fact, there's no, you, you, there's nothing to stick you to rules. I mean, Eurotrack has so many fucking rules, it's, it's evil with the amount of rules that it has. But that's great because you want to keep driving properly, and that trains you just how to drive properly, and you check for the lights and that sort of thing, and you keep going. And the more invested you get in building up the business, the more you abide by the rules of the road. Which I never do in video games, but I do in Euro Truck. It's just that's how a simulator should be. It should be a passion project, not just something you reskin and fart out. If Dan doesn't like it, then why does he have to say the game is bad? I don't like MOBAs, but that doesn't make League of Legends a bad game. But that's just the thing. I do like simulators. I like simulators a lot, and these bad ones ruin the rest of them. There's some great stuff out there, there's great simulators out there, and these crap ones are crap, and I know this because it's something I like. But also, you've got to always dig into stuff you don't normally play. Like, for me, I don't, I, I can't stand JRPGs, it's just something I just, I can't, I, mostly it's the turn-based combat, I just find it dull and fucking skillless. But I love The World Ends With You, and I love Starish Until The End Of Time, and they are both JRPGs, they do something a bit different. I'm kind of excited about the new Final Fantasy as well, the... 15 or whatever, I, I genuinely don't know, but the, the, the new one, it looks it looks good. I like the look of that, that looks more, less turn-based combat and more interesting combat, so I might even give that a go. I might like that. I don't know, but you got to give these things a go. I mean, I thought all simulators were shitty until I sort of played OMSI, and then I was like, oh, actually, this is a... That, that does something, that's wonderful, OMSI is brilliant, and then from there it snowballed. So, exploring things you may not like, I mean, I don't like MOBAs very much, but I do like Demigod. There's always exceptions to every genre, so play everything. Just play everything. The main problem I have with the Hells videos is he sets up a stance. I do apologize, this is a long ass video. Before even playing the game, that it is shit. He starts off with, I found this game, I haven't played it, but it's probably shit, and treats it so bad it ignores the good parts. For an $8 game, I wasn't expecting GTA 5, but with snowcats. I found this game, I haven't played it, but it's probably shit. You need an addendum to that, which is I found this game by searching for user reviews on Steam, going to the very bottom and reading what the worst games on Steam are voted by people. The actual worst games on Steam. That's how I find these things. I just look at what people think are the worst things. Because normally they're right. That's how I do this. But uh, even with that, I mean, a lot of the games, a lot of the videos that I do games on, the Hell series, just they don't get made. The videos, they, I, I record them and go, eh, it wasn't that bad. And then that's it. It just doesn't go up. I mean, I check away half of my videos. Most people know this by now. So I, I think I've made 31, 32 Hell videos now, and we've released 17, 18. So... It, I just lob stuff away all the time because it's just not good enough. It was either not good enough or it's, a lot of the time I'm like, oh, this isn't bad at all. And then it goes into FW or something else like that. Um, what was it? Oh, the uh, home improvisation one I thought would be awful. I thought that would be a absolutely knacky pile of ass that wouldn't work. That seemed like a cheap, shitty simulator and it was actually pretty good. So midway, like five minutes into recording the hell video for that, I went, oh, actually no, this will just be a challenge instead. And that's how that video was born. 
Um, so, yeah, no, I, I do... It's not just like, oh, this is gonna be shit and I make the video. I go, this is gonna be shit and then make the video. And if it was shit, then I'll continue to make the video and then release the video. But if it wasn't shit, I'll go, oh, no, I'll go over there. But this other comment, the, uh, for an $8 game, I wasn't expecting GTA 5, but the snow gets... I expect good stuff for eight dollars. I mean, if we have a, a gander on Steam now, uh, what else, what's under eight dollars right now? Uh, Transistor, Mirror's Edge, Deus Ex: Humans Revolution, Besiege. Uh, we've got Far Cry 3, Blood Dragon. Uh, Gary's Mod is just under there. I mean, most of these on sale. Let's actually drop down a bit so we don't see the sale things. Tomb Raider 3, one of my favorite games ever. Thief and Thief Gold. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Portal. Um, Dro Home. Grow Home is amazing! There's so many great games out there for 8 quid. Don't expect what is essentially just a series of shitty fetch quests. As, again, there's no, there's no game in these simulator games. It's go there, do the thing, go back, come back, do the thing, go back. They're never fun, they're never exciting, they're just really awful piles of arse. And I've taken a long time out to explain just how much arse they are today. But they are arse, these simulators, and I will continue to call them hell. Because they are. And I'll continue to go in saying, these games are going to be crap because I trust people on the internet. Sometimes. And now I have no soup. Oh, I have no drink either.